rack guards designed to protect racking legs and storage systems. Clip onto the rack, protect from those day-to-day -day bumps or that big hit. A racking collapse can be devastating. The rack guard is unique. It's got a hinge system what really clicks onto the rack. So if pallets are pulling in and out, rubbing against that rack leg, they can come off protection's not there. Also designed so the impact goes around the leg. The energy is pushing around, pushing around the rack guard, around the leg, so protecting the leg itself. Rack guard, the best protection on the market, but how is it made? Let's go and see the process of producing the rack guard. Here with Vlad uh, at the extrusion line and he's about to get it going. Vlad, what are you going to do? Uh, today we will be starting the uh, extrusion line, rack guards, uh, medium leg profile. Uh, yeah, we are ready to start. Let's get it going. Uh, material coming out now and we are ready to start warming up the uh, joint. See uh, the molten material coming out of the head and this is how you start the line up. So what Vlad's doing here is uh, getting the joint going. Warming it up, hot plastic onto the uh, start-up line, warming it up so the joint can be formed. So the, the rack guard profile is quite a complicated engineered product and especially for the A-state material that we really use, to get that formed in the calibration is quite a technical element. So to really get it formed, it, it takes a bit of skill from someone like Vlad. Now I'm checking if it's uh, material sticking to starting part, uh, checking if it's ready to stick. What you're wanting is to get the material bonding to that joint, so how tacky it is. Will it bond? Yeah, now we'll be joining material coming from uh, uh, extruder, from head. We'll be joining the starting of part, pulling this water and uh, then sending forward. Putting Vlad under a bit of pressure here, watching him. And the thing is, if it fails, you've just got to start again. But we've got confidence. This is just a joint initially. And you can see the, the polymer pulling through here. I need to maintain level of uh, water in time for material to pull down. For the moment, all it is is just pulling that plastic out of the extrusion head into the calibration. This might not look like much, but it's halfway there. And the critical thing is getting that material out of the extruder through to the end of the line. And we've got a guy guiding the start-up profile all the way through. So let's hope it doesn't break. Vlad, is this going to survive? Yeah, it will go through. Yeah, it's, it will go through all of it. Uh, It'll go it's through, break, yeah. no problem. Confident in your forming of the joint of the plastic. The polymer has got to the haul off. It's got hold of it. It's pulling it out. Now Vlad has got to show us the technical bit of how you make the profile of a rack guard. Let's go see. Right now I plugged in the uh, compressed air to start forming and uh, building the uh, legs. If you look here, it looks it looks more like a rack guard. I will be stretching the back leg uh, down to calibrator. Heat proof gloves can withstand up to 450 degrees of temperature because that's molten hot plastic. So this is more like an art form. This is it's engineered, it's technical, and this is about guiding, feeling, really understanding the process, understanding how the plastic will react. As you can see, the water's pouring out because it's a vacuum hasn't been formed yet. Until that seal is created, the water can escape. See, it's throbbing, and that air escaping is trying to form that seal, that vacuum. The safest way to do is uh, we're gonna wait uh, when the one leg will come out from tanks and we make uh, a little bit more. We've got to have patience with this. It just doesn't happen at a click of a finger. The biggest thing you can do is make alteration after alteration, quickly, 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 you never get it done. Where do the black stripes come from? So if you see here, this is the co-extruder and the pipe goes into the head and that's feeding the black lines 
into the thing. We've got one uh, leg uh, ready and uh, come out from the uh, sand to start making the uh, second leg. It's getting it, the leg's going in, it's coming through. It's at a delicate point in the process, but I think the lad's got it. I think he's going to get there. Why is it white? Uh, there's uh, many reasons. Uh, first reason uh, why would we waste yellow master batch, uh, which cost a lot of money on uh, no good product. Yeah, but when we've got a uh, shape, we can start adding additives. Uh, so you're going to add the colour. Yeah. No leg here yet, and it's just starting to come through. Just starting to form. Yeah, before I start building the vacuum, I need uh, to drill uh, all that for to make it uh, to breathe, yeah. Where, where will you drill? Yeah, it's uh, three sections, yeah, one on the middle and one on each side. Allows the air to get out. Now we've got a bit of colour. So, putting the sealant now in between tool blocks, closing the gap. That is called the die gap. So, the profile, the first stage is nearly there. It's coming through the calibration into the certain tools. They're all at different sizes because the polymer shrinks as it's cooled down. So fractions of a millimeter smaller as it goes along, as it's forming into shape, making sure when it's fully cooled out of this vacuum chamber, it's the correct shape. Perfect legs, perfect shape, coming out of the chamber. Well done Vlad. Thank you. First time, no method. I'm putting my hands underneath because at the end of the legs is a bit of a hook and that hook is what hooks around the racking and it's quite delicate to get that hook formed in plastic. The postco extrusion is going to come out here. So the, this first one here is for the hinge. So this bit here, you can see it's coming out there. So this is getting it formed. Looks a bit messy initially to get it bonding and getting it in line and that's at both sides. Lads, how long did it take you to learn this process from sort to finish to really perfect extruding the rat guard? Uh, it uh, took me about uh, seven months uh, to be able to start uh, starting lines. It, it, it wasn't uh, good as it now but I still could do it uh, with a higher amount of scrap. So, seven months to perfect this and make the rat guard an extrusion, learning that skill, learning how to do it in one go, just as we've seen. Yeah, now we've got our part in the shape and we'll be ready to start uh, sewing it. Uh, to put parts down, uh, I'll show you how it's done. The uh, hot blade will be put in part. So we've got our, our blade, temperature and speed. Don't look very good, it will do. First bit of scrap, slowly, slowly, patience, it's nearly getting there. Next off cut, the colours coming through shape is coming through. Uh, everything needs to be to specification, uh, we measure in a uh, logo position, uh, uh, part length, uh, I can see it straight away the uh, position is uh, wrong so it will need to adjust by uh, 45 millimeter. Tom can you adjust please? From men to yeah, log, I should be 65 millimeters. Yeah. Come through now, we can uh, start measuring again. I'm checking the log position. Yeah, and it's uh, up to specification now. 65 millimeter from top to log. Yeah, production. Finished rat guard there, made proper quality, following ISO 9001 quality standards, everything made, ready for application on racking legs. People who are in extrusion know-how have probably seen a similar process using different materials like PVC. And PVC 
would form that shape very easily and it's quite easy. However, using olefins, using something that's impact resistance takes a lot more skill, a lot more engineering to ensure we get that same shape but with impact resistance. And that's where ASAFE is different from everyone else.